Okay, so today I'm going to teach Andrew how to play trumpet. To start with is how, taking the trumpet out of the case. You want to make sure that your trumpet case is laying on the ground and not in your lap when you take the trumpet out because your case could fall off your lap and your trumpet could fall and get damaged. So we lay the trumpet down and take it out of the case. That's supposed to be the other way. You want me? Okay. <laughs> I'll turn it around. Good note. Make sure your trumpet case is right side up. You don't want your trumpet to fall out the wrong way either. Okay. To start with, uh, let's grab the mouthpiece and start with getting a good buzz going. And the idea behind a good buzz is to start by just freely letting your lips buzz, so doing this. And then thinking about focusing it more towards the center. And then a good embouchure is the idea of saying the word poo, as odd as that may sound. Poo. So, yeah, think of like saying poo and buzzing your lips. And so try putting those two together on the mouthpiece. Yeah. Okay. And now, now that you've got a good buzz going, translate to that to the trumpet. And stick the mouthpiece on the lead pipe and twist a little bit to make sure that it's in tight. And then, to hold the trumpet properly, your ring finger goes in the first slide finger hold and then your thumb will go in the back slide finger hold and if you don't have that you can just rest your thumb there and then your middle and index finger will kind of curl around the third valve and then your pinky will kind of rest underneath the slide and then your right hand you know um, first, second, and third finger on the valves, and then your pinky will rest on the hook, and then your thumb will kind of rest underneath the lead pipe. On top or in this thingy? Um, students typically start with their pinkies in it, um, however it's best to kind of eventually move them to having their pinky on top, because then they might rely on putting their pinky in there when playing and holding the trumpet. So we don't want them to depend on something they don't need for stability. Alright, and so now that you've got the idea of a buzz going, let's start playing some notes on the trumpet. Um, first note we'll start with is the second line G, which is just open, none of the valves down. <laughs> you out of tune, you have your tuning slide here. You pull out if you're sharp and push in if you're flat. Um, a good note is to make sure that you grease your tuning slide and all the slides on the trumpet um, as often as possible, at least once every other day, sometimes once a day. And then the same with your valves. Make sure you oil up your valves at least once every other day or once a day. Hey, what's, what's that one? That is um, for spit. So, you know, you've been playing on the trumpet for a while. Spit builds up inside. And so what you'll do is you'll hold that down. You'll <laughs> blow through. And any spit that's caught inside, you can just blow out. And then it helps empty out the trumpet should you get kind of a spitty, watery sound. Okay, so let's try the G again which is, again, just open. Good. Okay, next note is first space F, which is the first valve. And with the valves, the first valve is one semitone, the second valve is another semitone, and then third valve is a third semitone. 
and combinations of the three different valves and the semitones they represent is what creates the different pitches. And so let's try F now, first valve. <laughs> First line E, which is first and second bell. Okay. And then the D just under the staff, which is the first and third bell. And then C, which is open. And now you notice that the C and the G have the exact same fingering, and that's because brass instruments play on partials, and so one fingering will work for multiple notes in different octaves along the scale. And so, you know, you can play G open and C open as well. Now, now that you've gone down the scale, let's try going up. So we started with G, which was open. The next note up is the second space A, which is the first and second valve. Good. And then the next note up is third line B natural, which is just the second valve. And then third space C which is open, like the G and the low C. Good. So let's try going up the scale now, starting on the low C. D, one, three. E, one and two. scale on the trumpet now. Woo! Yay! <laughs> now, and one thing with playing notes is when we tongue and when we slur. And the idea with tonguing is that your airflow keeps going and your tongue will just slightly flick a little forward a little bit to just disrupt the stream a little bit, but your air will keep moving. Your air doesn't completely stop. and um, a good idea to think about is like a stick of butter, you know? The idea is that the butter, you have an entire stick, and your tongue is just a quick, like, knife slicing through the air, the butter. It's the same idea with your tongue. The airstream and your tongue just kind of quickly slices through the airstream, but the air keeps going. So, let's try that on just the open G. <laughs> With slurs, there are two different kinds of slurs. There are valve slurs and lip slurs. And with valve slurs, how that works is, is it's just changing notes by changing valves. So think of like starting on the open G and going down to F without using your tongue to break. So instead of tongue, you'll just play G and then down to F. <laughs> the same for any notes. Now with lip slurs, the idea is that it's the partials. So think of like playing the open G down to the open C. And it's all about focusing your air. And so as you slur downwards with lip slurs, you want to use more air and a little bit of a looser embouchure. And as you slur upwards with lip slurs, you want to think 
more focused air and a little bit of a tighter embouchure. So try the open G down to the open C. Exactly. And it's the same idea with any notes. Like E is the first and second valve, and A is the first and second valve. It's the same idea whenever they're, um, they're the same partials. You know, they have the same valve combination. They're just different partials. And so the idea is, again, you know, more air, a little looser embouchure, focus the air, and a little bit of a tighter embouchure. Right. How are we doing on time? 10.40. Okay. Um, now that you've got most of the basics down, let's try some of the different notes in between. So you learned that G was open and F was the first valve. F sharp, which is a half step between the two is second valve. So try the half sharp. Mm -hmm. And then you learn that E was the first and second valve, and E flat, which is a half step down, is the second and third valve. So try the E flat. Good. And then Going up the scale, it's the same idea. The A was 1 and 2, like the E, and then the A flat is 2 and 3, like the E flat. So try the A flat now. Good. And then you learn that B was the second valve, and B flat, which is a half step down, is the first valve. So try that. you've got that. Let's try all the different notes starting on the low open C. that you don't puff out your cheeks and I know that's something I sometimes tend to do when I'm struggling playing trumpet um, and it's not good because it kind of messes with your embouchure a little bit you know you don't want a tight embouchure and you don't want to like force your lips out into the trumpet like that but you also don't want to force the trumpet into your face if you're pushing into your embouchure the idea is that your lips should just kind of feel relaxed and then you mm, firm corners when you play and something I know I struggled with a lot too with buzzing is that I, my embouchure my lips were too far apart and so they couldn't buzz against each other when playing the trumpet and so there wasn't really getting any buzz going and so I wasn't getting any sound out and so you want to make sure that your lips are close enough that they buzz against each other but not too far apart that they buzz against each or too far apart that they can't buzz against each other. How are we doing on time? Almost. Why don't you play some around the book? <laughs> okay. Um, now that you've played a different bunch of different notes, how about we try one of the songs in the book? How about number 12, First Flight? Mm -hmm. Can you remember the fingerings <laughs> for the notes? Is 
E is 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. The D is 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. The C is no fingers. Yep. And the G is no fingers. Mm -hmm. And the F is 1. Mm -hmm. And then E is 2. D is two, 1, 3. Mm -hmm. And C is no fingers. Yep. Okay, so let's try that one. So let's play an E first to make sure we got it. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. And that's all for today's lesson.